Let's learn how to create a release inside of the GitHub platform. The first thing we need to do is get to the release page. Now you can do that by clicking on tags and then switching to the releases or go here in the bottom right and click on releases. This will take you to the releases page. If you click the tags, it would take you to the tags page. You just have to click on the releases tab up here in the upper left to move over to the releases. Now, if you don't have any releases, you'll be met with this page where we can create one. There's this green button down here that just creates a new release release. So we'll click on it. Now from here, the first option that you have to take is you have to choose a tag on GitHub. Every release has a tag. That's kind of how GitHub understands what can and cannot be a release. Now you can have a tag without a release because tags are inherent to Git itself and not necessarily the GitHub platform. But in order to have a release, you have to have a tag. So the first thing that we do is we drop down this choose a tag, and then we can choose a tag that we want to use as the release. Now tags are always associated with a branch or a commit. So if I were to choose this existing tag, it's gonna use the source that's under its commit. So just to show you a tag that doesn't have a release, if I select it, it automatically is going to be using whatever commit that tag is associated with. However, if I were to create a new tag, let's say v0.0.1, and then click on this button or hit enter, it comes up with another option that I have to select the target. Now the target is either a branch or it's a commit, like I've been explaining. So we could either select main because I have the main branch and I want to release off of the main branch, or I could select a certain commit that I want to release on. Most of the time when you're doing a release, you're probably doing it on a specific commit or you're doing it off of like the master or main branch. So from now, I'm just gonna select the main branch and it will be whatever commit that particular branches on. The next is the previous tag, and this identifies the previous release that this one comes after. Generally, you can set it to auto, and what GitHub will do is it'll take semantic versioning and just choose the most recent tag as the previous tag. The next button is to generate release notes, and this will automatically generate markdown for your description so that you don't have to write it out. What this does is it uses AI to look at the previous release up until this release and sees what all of the differences are. It then adds it as marked down under your description. I'm gonna click on it just to show what it does. So you can see it set the title to v0.0.1, and that's just the name of the tag that we created. And then all of this markdown telling us, hey, these are the contributions, these are the different things that happen, these are the pull requests. If we click on preview, we can kind of get a sense of what the markdown looks like on the web page. And this looks pretty good, so I'll just leave it at that. The next thing down here is to attach binaries. This will be like your executables for the application that you're creating, or maybe text files or configuration files that you need to add to the release so that people know how to work with your application. The source will always be compressed and zipped up in the release itself, so you don't have to worry about doing that on your own. These are just for any extra files that don't exist on the repository itself that you can upload. The next checkbox is to set as a pre-release. And what this is saying is this release is not ready for production, but if you want like a nightly build type of deal, uh, you could add this as a flag so that people know, hey, this isn't the most recent stable version. These are just like the pre-release ones that might end up being a completed production level version. If you have discussions enabled, you'll have this second checkbox to create a discussion from this release. And this just creates a discussion in the categories so that you can talk about the different things within this release. Now you have two more buttons down here to either publish the release saying that we're done and this is good to go, or we can save it as a draft to work on it later. Let's go ahead and publish this release. Now that it's published, it takes us to the releases page and we can see our release. This is our markdown from what we just saw with our description. This is our title and we have certain assets. Now these assets are the compressed versions of our source in our repository. And if we had uploaded any other executables or binaries or text files or whatever, they would have shown up here. If you're not happy with something in this release, we can come up here and click on on the edit button in the upper right, and we just get taken back to the same page that we saw before. We also have a button up here to compare releases. Now this is comparing the tags. So like I said earlier, each tag is associated with some commit. So your source code exists at those points in time. And what this compare button does is it compares between those two commits, noting all of the changes between the two. If we come back up here in the upper left and click on releases, we go back to the full releases page where we can see all of our releases. and 
to create a new release from here, now that we don't have that green button anymore, we actually click on draft a new release and we fill out all of the information that we did before. Also, like I said earlier, releases are associated with a tag. If we go to tags, we can see our v0.0.1 tag exists here and we can open it up and see the same information that we just posted in our release. Another way to create a release is if we have a tag that currently doesn't have a release, we can click on that tag and then in the upper right, we can create a release from that tag. It automatically fills out that first portion where we selected the tag and we can add any of our title and description that we want to just like before. One thing to know is if you're creating a new release and you already have other releases in your repository, you get this checkbox that says set as the latest release. This will automatically be checked because it's expecting you if you're creating a new release that it is the next in line, but you could uncheck this. And what will happen is on the main repository page where you see your releases on the right, it will display just the latest release as the one to click on. If we go back to our main code repository, we can see in the bottom right that we have that v0.0.1 and that is the latest release. It has this latest tag next to it. And we can click on this and go immediately to that release and be able to download the source code if we need to. So with that, that is how you create a release on the GitHub website.